for the industry for the most part does a good job of rotating products. However, the traditional rotation type programs and some of these products that have been around for over 40 years, there is seeing some variability in the efficacy of how it's working. Not only on the antipoxidial front, but also on the antimicrobial front that can play a factor. So, and, and when you go around the industry and talk to different companies and different complexes, what works in one complex does not work in another complex. And then if you go in and pull antibiotics out, then that just leaves the, the intestinal tract more naive for um, intestinal damage, and then coccidiosis can come in and rear its head. More people are rotating between a, a drug program and antibiotic pro, uh, or a uh, vaccine program. And also now people are running more just straight chemical type programs that um, it's not an ionophore antimicrobial, but it's more of a product that's just strictly an anti-coccidial. Some companies can run that beautifully. Other companies run that product and they get necrotic enteritis because there's no antimicrobial effect. So um, I think you have to continue rotating. That's the only way. And, and some people have figured it out by rotating with a vaccine onto uh, different drug programs. And then even on the vaccine, adding an ionophore to curb some of the antibacterial mm -hmm. effects. So there's a bunch of different combinations out there that people are trying. Work great in some locations, other locations it, it doesn't work for whatever reason, whether it be the soil that they're in, the environment, the humidity levels, um, the, all those things definitely play a factor. If you can prevent intestinal damage in a good environment with the feed product, the feed ingredients, feed formulas, and a good management environment, um, I think eventually we'll be able to determine how to feed these animals without antibiotics successfully, not just for one flock or two flocks, but for two years. But I think a lot of the industry is still on a big learning curve. And as I mentioned, what works in North Georgia may not work in South Alabama or Northeast Arkansas. So, um, some parts of the industry have been very successful at giving a probiotic either as a spray in the hatchery or day of age at the farm to try to start the birds off with a good microflora, a positive bacterial flora within their intestinal tract to try to offset some of the clostridia that can come in and cause some necrotic enteritis. So that has been successful some places. Other places really have to go all the way back to the breeders and start from the ground up there, making sure they have a good microflora and moving it on through the broiler. The broiler. So there's so many different factors that go into things. Um, so I think the, the best way we know right now to mitigate that is either a probiotic at a spray or some type of probiotic in the feed and re trying to get as much of an acid environment in that intestinal tract to promote the good bacteria as possible. Yes. Honestly, it's going to go back to the basics. It's going to go back from not only from the time you hatch those birds, but the moment you place them, the first seven days, and how you manage your birds is going to be very, very critical, along with your feed ingredients and trying to get the intestinal tract off to a good, healthy start. Mm -hmm.